See a challengers with pack mentality. Maybe, maybe I will just go back to that reckoning deck. Was it this one? This deck had a high win rate, but I also was just queuing into Callista every game. So I mean, who knows, right? I think Reckoning is definitely somewhat of a potential card. I don't know. I mean, it's sort of a win game button. But it's also sort of crap. What do you think of Yetis? Um, Yetis are interesting. I think Freljord is a really feels bad region right now. Freljord kind of got triple nerfed off of these... This, this patch. I think it's the weakest region in the game right now. Unless people decide that the best way to play spiders is Freljord. I mean, it's an optional with Ezreal. Maybe it's the best one with Ezreal, but I can't really call it more than an optional. I played this deck a lot through Rickening, felt bricky to got one for Judgment. Yeah, I'm very down with that. I have no problem cutting out one Reckoning. I don't disagree at all. Froyo needs a two drop Yeti so the spell can actually work more consistently. Well, I, I think Tall Tales is just a bad card. I mean, even if they had a two drop Yeti, Tall Tales is is just not a good card. Three mana for a conditional five five is not good. It's, I know it probably sounds good, but it's not good. It's like it's very conditional, and you might say, well, but the condition is you know mitigated by the fact that you have a two drop Yeti. But if they kill it on the stack, then your card does nothing. See what's out there. Is War Archetype still good? No. War Mother's Archetype has literally never seen a high win rate. It had a high win rate in the preview patches, like five months ago. If you want to be a smart ass, we can yes, that that's technically true, but it was still a bad deck even then. I don't know. I guess when she who wanders before she got like quintuple nerfed, I guess it was pretty pretty hilarious. Where do you see win rates? Mobilytics does masters level uh win rates every week. I add them to the pinned comments of my meta Mondays. I guess you just mage seeker here, huh? I mean, it's just not really worth it to do anything fancy. I don't know. I mean, you could play like Glory Seeker on the Prankster. I just kind of like you will be don't know line. if I care enough. I'd rather just put large, beefy dudes down because the thing is, like, Reckoning will often be killing shit anyway. Like a oh, God, this deck is so good. I lose. That's not fair. Ow. Okay, I probably should have respected the prankster, guys. Didn't you make this deck? Yeah, it's not good. I mean, it might be about to beat me, but... <clears throat> it's also just only beating this, this, this deck. It wasn't warm by this control top tier. No. Alan got number one with it. I mean, I it's, it's the same thing as me getting number one with Prankster Burn. It's I, I've I've never I've never said Prankster Burn was a good deck. I put it I put it on uh, I listed it as a tier two deck for a while and then I bumped it to tier three. It's all right. I mean, it has the ability to take some games, but with me. I wouldn't call it a good deck. Most decks that make it to number one are good decks. And I know that, so that sounds like really, really, really counterintuitive. 
I understand that's like that sounds like a really edgy hot take, but usually for a deck to be meta stable is gonna be very different criteria for a deck to have a high win rate, right? It's like a lot of decks getting to number one are stuff that generates surprise value. Events deck makes number one says it's not good. Yes, right. I I I understand that's really really counterintuitive. Contain the but arcane. usually decks that will have the highest win rates are going to be ones that will lose win rates the fastest because they're generating high win rates off of the opponent not knowing how to play around them. Especially when you get to masters, having surprise value is a really 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 big deal. When you when you're at masters and your opponents don't know what list you're playing and they don't know how to play around it, that's a gigantic advantage. And people are more prone people will play around good decks but they won't play around weaker decks. So you'll have higher win rates with bad decks. Now you might say, well, but Swim, doesn't that make bad decks good? And no, because the criteria for being a good deck is to be able to have a long-term, stably high win rate when the opponent, it, it's, it's just gimmicky, right? Surprise value is inherently a gimmick because it won't be good long-term. It has a high win rate, but it falls off as soon as people will play around it. That's a lot of decks that make it to, to number one. A lot of decks that make it to number one. I would say most decks are basically just going to be contingent off of that surprise value. <clears throat> so, I mean, if you want a higher win rate, don't net deck. I would say this mostly applies to Masters level, by the way. When you're playing, like, below Masters, or at the very least below Diamond, for sure below Diamond, when you're playing below a certain level, net decking is fine. But when you're trying to climb in Masters, when you're trying to climb to number one, People at that level will be playing around everything they know to be in your deck, and you having a face-up deck is a really big disadvantage. You don't want your opponent to be able to properly play around you. Honestly, this is really, really important to understand. Because, uh, for, for example, a lot of people will net deck something just because it gets to number one, and that's not a good idea. You're just... You're, you're kind of... It's... it's it's kind of like doubly the opposite of what you should be doing. It's not a bad idea to net deck good decks, or to make your own deck to get to number one, but net decking a deck that gets to number one is, is basically, it's like a, it's a double negative that doesn't cancel out. It's bad. It's bad. I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I think it's, it's important to, to mess around with stuff, but as soon as something becomes a net deck, it just gets worse. Net decking is like the S&P 500 of TCGs. You'll do well, but by definition, you'll never beat the market. Right, exactly. S&P 500. That, that's, a, that's a good example for the seven people in chat that understand what that is. <laughs> Which makes it a bad example. I don't know. I really, I, I need you guys to understand that. That's, if you're going to listen to one thing I say all day, just make it that, okay? Have we tried Iceborne with Yetis? That sounds that sounds not great. So here's here's the problem with Iceborne with Yetis, which is that stats on units have diminishing returns, much more so with attack. The thing is like at, at, an amount of attack passed around four, even arguably three, is kind of useless. Sometimes you can make it a bit more useful with a keyword like elusive or maybe quick attack or or something like that. For the most part, all, all you need is like three or four attack. Sometimes up to five, but reasonably speaking, after around four, it starts to do very, very, very little. Um, and health also has diminishing returns, although much less strong. It's like health is useful up to like five, six, seven, and after that, it starts falling off. And this is part of the problem of, I guess, cards like Battering Ram, which is it's got twelve health, but again, huge diminishing returns past that point. You don't you don't really need 12 health, right? So you're kind of overpaying for a certain amount of health you're not necessarily using. And then of course, there's, you know, a good example of Mage Seeker Insider. This is why Mage Seeker Insider isn't really super good because as nuts as it feels like, it's like, "Oh wow, I got a 4 mana 6/5." You're like, you realize it's not that different from a Bull Elnock, right? Like you're you're putting yourself on a pretty expensive condition to just sometimes get plus 2 attack over a bull elnock and like how often does the difference between four and six attack do anything fairly fairly not often i mean you're gonna get chump blocked by one ones right you're you're not going to 
you know, you don't have any more health than a Blalnuk has. So it's just like, you know, you have the ability to block out something like a Radiant Guardian on the opponent's side, right? It's like, it does matter sometimes, but on any average situation, it's pretty far from mattering, that plus two attack. And then you've got the same problem with Yetis, which is like, a lot of people like the idea of running Von Yip Yetis. And the problem with Von Yip Yetis as it compared to Von Yip Spiders is that stats have just that big diminishing return fall off. It's like the difference between a 5-5 and a 7-7 is pretty fucking small, actually. It's it's actually almost nothing. There's almost no difference between a 5-5 and a 7-7. It's crazy. It's 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 probably like actually like almost 10 times smaller than the difference between a 1-1 and a 3-3. I'm, I'm not exaggerating. It's really, it's much smaller, right? And that's why you, you want to use Von Yip on weaker things, right? And it's the, the same logic is true for, like, Iceborne Legacy. I mean, they're both in the same region, which is kind of nice because it makes them more flexible. But, I mean, Iceborne Legacy is, like, you know, I mean, you're just making it 7-7s, seven which... Isn't really great. <clears throat> and also, I mean, at that point, you could actually argue that Von Yip is better. One of the differences between Iceborne and Von Yip, and the reason Iceborne is kind of sort of quote unquote better than Von Yip, is basically that Iceborne is retroactive. You can use it on a board and buff things that were already on the board before. And that's a big argument for spiders, but not for yetis, because you're constantly playing spiders on turn one, turn two, turn three. You're not playing yetis on those turns, right? So, you know. And then, of course, you know, you, you've got so, stuff like Yeti Yearling being one mana, so you'd probably just run Vanyip at that point. And even then, if you're in Vanyip, you're probably in spiders. <clears throat> 